A rectangular loop of wire is placed next to a straight wire as shown. There's a current of 3.5 amps in both wires. Determine the magnitude and direction of the net force on the loop. So there are several concepts that we have to consider in a problem like this. Go ahead and make a list. Concept. First of all, a long straight wire will produce a magnetic field um, if there's current flowing through that. So we need to remember how that works. Magnetic field, the symbol for that is B, uh, due to, let's say, long or infinite, um, infinite straight wire. We also have magnetic forces. So we have to consider magnetic force, which we'll call F with a subscript B, you may see it with a subscript M, um, on a current, a wire containing current. In order to work these things out, we also have to remember the so-called right-hand rules, which there are more than one. Okay, so we have these things to worry about. We have equations. We have equations to correspond to with this. What is the magnetic field produced by an infinitely long straight wire containing a current? There's an equation for that for the magnitude of the magnetic field. It's given by mu naught over 2 pi. Those are just numbers. And then it's proportional to the current in that wire and inversely proportional to r, the distance away from that wire. So that's one equation that we'll need. The magnetic force on a current, let's say a current carrying wire is the way we should think about this. That magnetic force, which I'll write here in magnitude Fb, is given by the current, the length of that strip of wire, and the magnetic field. And uh, there is technically a sine theta that should show up here. But typically for us, at least in this problem, theta will be 90 degrees, and so this will end up just being I L B for our purposes. Okay, now we have to keep in mind what these various right-hand rules are, so let's remind ourselves of that. So I'm gonna call this right-hand rule number one, which has to do with um, the shape of the magnetic field produced by a long straight wire. Basically, um, the magnetic field B direction by uh, infinite uh, infinite wire, it's an infinitely, infinitely straight wire with current I. The way that this works is that your thumb, your right thumb, points in the direction of the current, and then your wrapping fingers tell you the direction of the magnetic field at any point around that wire. So the fingers tell you the direction of B. That's for predicting the direction of the magnetic field produced by a current. What about right-hand rule number two? This has to do with the magnetic force. The magnetic force on a current carrying wire. So if there's a wire that contains current, the first thing you do is you take your index finger and point it in the direction of the current. So the index finger of your right hand points in the direction of the current. And if you're dealing with charged, single charged particles, this might also be the direction of the velocity. The middle finger points in the direction of the magnetic field. So the current direction with your index finger, middle finger points in the direction of the magnetic field. What's left is your thumb, perpendicular to both, tells you the direction of the force. Now with all that in mind, we can start to make a little more, more progress here. Thinking about right-hand rule number one, we see this long a straight current here with current pointing to the right. Given the right-hand rule, that tells us that the magnetic field points into the page on this side and it points out of the page on the other side. Okay? And since the magnetic field weakens with distance, that means that what I could do is draw these circles like this and then draw them slightly smaller, farther away, slightly smaller, farther away, and so on. So the magnetic field is in fact getting weaker as we move 
further and further away like that. Now that's telling us about the magnetic field direction. We can then ask, what about the magnetic force? And I'll try to draw that in a different color like green. So on the top, given that there is current flowing in this direction, right hand rule number two tells me index finger in the direction of current, middle finger in the direction of the magnetic field. This tells me that the force acting on the top part of this rectangular loop, the force is this way up. So F top, the force on the top part of the rectangle would point upward. For example, on the bottom, the current is going the other direction. That means the force will go the other direction as well. You can check that quickly to the left in and the force is pointing down. And then on the right, we could say, well, the current is going in that direction. Current magnetic field, that means the force would be pointing like this. So the force on the right part of the, of the rectangular loop and to the left like this. Now, by symmetry, the force acting on the right and on the left have to cancel because they should have the same magnitude. So let me just go ahead and point this out. These two forces have the same magnitude. Yes, the magnetic force is changing all throughout. It's get, in fact, pretty strong at the top and gets weaker and weaker and weaker. But the same thing happens to this one. And so the effect is the right and the left forces cancel. So there is no net force left and right. The only chance there could be for a net force is if the F top and F bottom don't cancel. And that will actually be the case. The F, the force on the top, should be the stronger one because the magnetic field is stronger closer to that current. So it, the picture is more accurately something like this. What remains, therefore, is to figure out the force, the value F top, figure out the force F bottom, and take the difference to get the net force. And so that's the next thing that we're going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Since we're going to label these things top and bottom, what we should do is realize that this distance here, the three centimeters, we can call that R top, the distance from the top, from the very top wire to the top of the loop. And this distance here, we can call that R bottom, which is three centimeters plus five centimeters. So that's eight centimeters. Okay. The value of the force, the force on the top follows the equation that was written down previously, ILB. So it's the current in the loop, the length of the loop, rather the width, it's this here, this is L loop, and then the strength of the magnetic field, B on the top. We can write down a similar formula for the force acting on that bottom part of the rectangle. It's the same current in the loop, it's the same length, it's the same width. What, the only thing that's different is the strength of the magnetic field at the location of the bottom part of the loop. So therefore what we'll do is we can write the net force in the vertical direction. Let's write it like this. Let's let this be the y direction. This would be the force pointing up minus the force pointing down. And so factoring out the common current and length, this looks like I loop times the length or really the width of that loop and then times the difference of the magnetic field strength on the top and on the bottom. We're getting closer to the end. What we need to remember is what the formula is for the magnetic field strength given an infinitely long wire. And it's this formula here, mu naught, two pi, i, and r. All of those things are the same for both the top and the bottom except for the distance away. Let's just make that explicit. The current in the loop the length of the loop, mu naught over two pi, the current in the wire, in the long wire. Let me write that as I long. It's the same value, 3.5 amps, but R top minus mu naught over two pi, 
I long R bottom. And so we're nearly there. We're just doing as much algebra as we can to make our lives easier and to try to avoid errors. We can write all of this as mu naught over 2 pi times current in the loop, current in the long wire, times the length of the loop, and then what remains in parentheses is 1 over r top minus 1 over r bottom. And we can plug in all the numbers that we have. Let's just remind ourselves that mu naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla times meters divided by amps. And we can plug everything in and what you would find is that this is 5.10 times 10 to the minus 6 tesla times amps times meters. This would round to 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6 and when you see tesla times amps times meters you can remember that that does have the same units as I, L, and B, and that has to give you units of newtons. So the net force acting on that rectangular loop, 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons.